Hello everyone and welcome back to our talk about carbohydrates day one. So we've already talked about the basics of carbohydrates and a lot of the properties of monosaccharides, meaning one sugar, but we've actually only talked about the open form of these and we really need to talk about the closed form of these because that's what you see more often um, whenever it's within your body. So to do that, we need to go back and just think about um, a few of the things we talked about in the last section of organic stuff. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to recognize hemiacetals, acetals, hemiketals, and ketals. So now I'm using the biochem sort of terminology of differentiating if it's an acetal versus a ketal, as opposed to what organic chemists do, which is just call everything an acetal. So we're going to sort of differentiate it because it's going to make a difference based on the type of sugar. So that's why I want to do that. So, and then after that, what we're going to do in our next class is talk about when you have a monosaccharide, how to go from the open form to the closed form of a sugar. So since we're going to see hemiacetals and ketals in um, sugars, I wanted to explain how that happens. Um, we've already gone over this a little bit. So this is just the reaction at the top shows how you form a hemiacetal, and the hemiacetal is shown at the right. It comes from a key, from an aldehyde, if it's a hemiacetal. Um, it comes from an aldehyde plus an alcohol, and you get this thing right here. But remember we said this is only an intermediate product. So whenever we saw it before, we actually showed it in the full acetal form. So like once you form the hemiacetal, it goes here, it keeps reacting with another molecule of the alcohol, and you get this acetal shown at the bottom. But for sugar, that's not what it does. It stays in the hemiacetal. So I just wanted to focus a little bit more on the hemiacetal part for right now. So this molecule here. So just like we saw in the previous section where we talked about organic stuff, we saw that you can form a hemiacetal but we also know that this reaction can occur with a ketone. So if that happens, if you've got a ketone here on the left, then the thing on the right is then going to be called the hemiketal. And again, this is only an intermediate, so it could still go forward to form the full ketal, which would be at the bottom here. But what we're going to focus on right now is the hemiketal, this molecule right here, because that's what sugars are more likely to form, at least the closed form. So I know we talked about this before, so if this all looks familiar, you can skip this part, but I just wanted to make sure we're all really confident in identifying hemiacetals, hemiketals, ketals, and acetals. So that way you can tell the difference when you see them, because we're going to see them in a sugar, and sugars are real complicated, so I want to make sure we can identify them based on an organic example first, so that way when we get in the sugar, we'll know exactly what we're looking for. So this is the basic strategy. The first thing you're going to do is locate the key carbon. That's the carbon that has two O's attached, so we've already talked about that. So if I'm looking at the example on the right, it's already circled. That's the key carbon because it's got two oxygens attached. The next thing you're going to say is, does this molecule have two an OH on the key carbon, so the one that has two O's? If yes, then that means it's a hemi-something, either a hemiacetal or hemiketal. If not, then that means it's a full of whatever that is, either acetal or ketal. So you just want to say, does it have it? So if I look at this molecule on the right, the answer would be no, it doesn't, so then it's not a hemi. Then the last thing I would do is see how many carbon-carbon bonds are on the key carbon. So if there's only one, then that would mean it's an acetal. And if there's two, then that would mean it's a ketal. So if you look at the one on the right, again, there's two carbons attached to the key carbon. So directly attached, not like an O carbon. But so we're talking about the C here and the C here. So because it has one, two, then that means it's a ketal. So let's look at the bottom examples. So one of these, um, can we find one that's not a ketal? That's something that's not a ketal. So something that only has one carbon attached. That would be example two, right? So if you look at example two here, the key carbon's here, and it's only got one carbon attached to that. We don't look past that. We only look at the key carbon. So then what's the other thing that is attached there? Right, it's got to have four bonds, so it's got to have a hydrogen. So it also has a hydrogen. So we know that that um, comes from the aldehyde that has a hydrogen there. So that's, that's another way you could look for it. So either you can just count the number of carbons and be like, there's only one. It's an acetal something. Or you could actually draw the hydrogen on there to make the fourth bond, and then that's another way you can recognize, oh, that's an acetal or a hemiacetal. Okay, so let's pause the video and see if you can um, identify examples one, two, three, and four on this page. All right, so is this what you got? Okay, so hopefully it is. Um, if it is, you can go ahead and skip to the next slide. But if not, let's talk about it. So for number one, we circle the carbon here. That one has um, got an OH, so it's gonna be a hemi, right? So we wrote hemi. And then how many carbons are attached to that key carbon? There's two, right? So it's a ketone, it's a ketal. So that's gonna be a hemiketal. For number two, we circled the key carbon. We already said that it's an acetal. So is it a full acetal or a hemiacetal? 
it's going to be a full acetal, right? Because there's no OH, there's two O carbons. So that's going to be a full acetal. Then if you look on number three, we circle the key carbon here. That's going to be a hemi because it's got no H. And then would it be acetal or ketal? Right, it's going to be an acetal. So there's a hydrogen there, right? And the last one, if you circle the key carbon there, so we've got um, no OHs, so not hemi, it's just going to be a full. And then we've got two carbons, so it's going to be just a regular ketal. So here's an example of all four of the different types that you can have. So before we move on, I just want to make sure we feel good about this. So let's do one more example. So pause the video and check and see which one of these that you think they are. So go through one, two, three, four, five, six. The choices are going to be acetal, which you can abbreviate if you want, hemiacetal, ketal, hemiketal, or none of these. If it's none of these, it just means it's some other functional group. So at least one of these is none of those top four. It's something else. So I just want you to be able to, think, to recognize and not get tricked. Okay? So pause the video and see if you can figure out what all of these molecules are. All right. So let's just show what the answers are. So these are the answers. Number one is a hemiketal. Number two is an acetal. Number three is none of those. Number four is a hemiacetal. Number five is a ketal. And number six is a hemiacetal. Now, for number three, it's none of those, right? We've actually seen this functional group before. What is that? It's a hydrate, right? So it has a key carbon because it's got two O's on it, but both of the O's are H's. So it can't be like a hemi-hemi. It's just called a hydrate. That's what that is. So that's why that one's not really relevant to this part. And then number six also looked kind of weird, right? But if you just follow the same process, you should have gotten the same kind of answer, right? So we circled the carbon and we saw there was an OH, so it was a hemi. And then if we looked at the number of carbons attached, there was only one and the other one's a hydrogen. That's why it's a hemiacetal. And I want you to get really used to looking at number six because that's going to be very similar to what sugars look like. They form a cyclic hemiacetal. That means like a ring. So they form a cyclic version of a hemiacetal and they're going to like close up and make those rings. And that's what sugars do. Um, the only difference is they're going to have also a lot of OHs on the side. Because like remember glucose had so many OHs. Most of them aren't doing anything. There's just going to be one that actually forms this ring and then the rest are just going to be there. Okay. So just get used to looking at those. Hopefully this all makes sense, but if not, just ask me in class or check out the activities and see if that helps. And with that, that's going to conclude our day of lecture for today. So thank you so much for checking this out before class, and hopefully it helps you. Um, after this, you should be able to do all of the first activity for this section, so make sure you complete that whole thing or at least have questions about it. But our focus of the next lecture is going to be different material. We're going to be moving on from this, so hopefully you feel ready for that.